I'm going to give you a brief introduction of who are on the call today. Uh, I'm happy to have Andy from Microsoft, who is the MR specialist for Asia, uh, who will be talking about this topic today. I also have Anand Murray from Spearjin. Uh, he works from the India team and he is a mixed reality expert. I have Brijesh, who is from sales. And thank you, Ted, for joining this call, who is the president of Spearjin. A uh, little bit more about uh, Spearjin. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we are a mixed reality partner with Microsoft. We are 500 in 2008. Um, we, uh, we have a development center in Pune. That's where I'm sitting at today. We have development center in US, Zurich, and Ireland. Uh, we specialize in medical device manufacturing and healthcare. Uh, and in this demo, we'll show you uh, some custom apps that we have built uh, with the HoloLens. We follow the Agile methodology for development, uh, and we have a lot of experience in cloud. We run our own products as well. Uh, that is Tycom Director and Wiser. Uh, those are built on the HoloLens. As an organization, we have four main offerings through uh, application modernization, application support, uh, AR, VR development, uh, and we also do a lot of robotic process automation as well. We are a Microsoft partner. Uh, and we have a mixed reality partner as well with Microsoft. Uh, uh, our, in our background for application development, we have made a lot of applications across um, education, uh, uh, healthcare. In healthcare, we have done a lot of uh, ERX, claims management, and PBM. That's our core strengths when it comes to healthcare development. Uh, we are going to introduce you to our MR, uh, the MR journey today, and we are going to show you uh, some examples with HoloLens uh, using Remote Assist uh, and using the Guides program. We are also going to show you some custom apps that we built today, and we'll demo them for you. Over to Andy. Thank you. Uh, so uh, before I start, uh, Probably just a quick intro of myself. Uh, my name is Andy. Uh, so I'm the Microsoft Mixed Reality Partner Specialist based in Singapore and covering Southeast Asia, India, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and also Korea. So uh, today I'm going to uh, probably spend 10 minutes give you a quick overview of the uh, uh, Microsoft Mixed Reality and also HoloLens. Um, um, so I want to start with my conversation with the uh you know the uh, the the work we did did with Toyota, and there are uh, a few reasons I should really like to uh, use this uh, Toyota customer story, uh when I have the uh, conversation with customer, particularly you know in the in the in the manufacturing uh, uh industry, um so Toyota is an iconic company in manufacturing so not only because it's the number one car maker globally but also I think if you are you are from the manufacturing industry you. You, you, you know that you know Toyota is the company invented the uh, Toyota production system or the link manufacturing. In the Toyota production system, actually they talk about they, they never stop you know their uh, continuous improvement. They actually use so this story actually uh, will tell you that how Toyota actually use HoloLens mixed reality to drive the continuous improvement in their training. Next slide. Uh, so I'm not able to hear the sound of the video, so what we need to reach there, reach the computer sound. I'm sorry for that. No problem. Part of Toyota's culture is based on Kaizen, which means iterative improvement. We also had a concept called Kaikaku, which is a breakthrough or a major innovation that fundamentally changes things. If we just make small improvements, we're not going to be able to stay number one for long. We've got to find this new leap innovation that we can move forward with. 
augmented reality and the ability to provide additional information to an engineer on the shop floor or a team member on the shop floor while they're doing their job. SANS have huge potential impact. We launch a new model every three years. Our team members have to relearn or learn a new process and guides in combination with the data collection tools that are available from the HoloLens really have been a breakthrough for us. The main thing that we're looking for is a tool to help our team learn better and learn faster and, and have a better training experience and also free up our trainers to where they can work with multiple people at the same time where as in the past it's been one-on-one -on -one training. They have complete control and, and can modify and update the training as they need. That's really a leap innovation on figuring out what types of things convey that training most effectively and in the quickest way possible to our trainees. In order to have a more innovative culture, you have to try things differently. You cannot be innovative and stay the same. As we do that, we have to keep in mind the Toyota way and our respect for people and make sure that we are giving them technologies that they can utilize and develop to improve the process. I think that's really where we've had so much success so quickly with guides. Okay, so yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's a nice uh, case study. So you know, in the uh, Toyota production system, they talk about uh, Kaizen for the incremental improvement, and also they talk about uh, Kakaku for the major improvement. So it's great to hear Toyota that from Toyota that they view mixed reality as you know the technology enable their breakthrough uh, in the continuous improvement. And another case I would like to share with you is the uh, customer case that we did with our partner in China for the G Healthcare. So um, G Healthcare actually uh, they manufactures the most complex medical equipment, uh, such as CT and also MRI scanners. Um, so maintenance of those uh, you know sophisticated equipment require uh, the service engineer to undergo um, the intensive training and also certification process. Um, but the challenge G has, uh, probably I think probably not only G, but also you know the other vendors uh, providing the uh, those medical uh, device, um, is the cost of those complex medical equipment are very high, and even G cannot you know have a one training center to house all the models available for the engineers to have the hands-on training, and even for those uh, equipment or models they have in the uh, uh, training center. Uh, so that the um, the trainee or the engineer are able to get the hands-on you know uh, experience. Um, during the training, there's still very high risk that it, it could expose the uh, the people to radiation or the any incidental damage caused by the trainee during the training. You know um, are very costly. Okay. So and also so in China, you need to train up every year. They need to train up train up like up to 2,000 engineers, not only you know for their internal the uh, uh, employee, but also uh, the service engineer you know, from distributors and the resellers. So they realize actually the, um, the traditional method of training actually have some limitations. So that's why they, they, they turn to Microsoft and our, and our partner to use HoloLens and Mixed Reality to improve the training efficiency, effectiveness, and also minimizing, minimizing the, the, the risks. So on this slide, so you will see two use case. Um, so the first one on the left is uh, the use case that are for the MRI system cabinet training. So this system actually has a super complex wide system cabinet. So even in the hands-on environment, so it's actually difficult for the trainee to understand the, the connection and also how different pieces they link together. But with HoloLens, so we are able to overlay the holographic and also animated connection diagrams onto the re cabinet and the overlay functions as the you know the uh, virtual coach to speed up the learning process the second case is uh, for the detector module replacement in the ct scanner so that's on the on, on the on the right side and the detector module are very delicate components and they're also very expensive so if without the uh, good training, so it's very easy for the uh, trainee or the service engineer to damage the part during the service procedures. Then with the high fidelity holographic model uh, rendered in the HoloLens 2, uh, so the engineer 
the engineer actually they they taking the chair they can actually observe and learn the process uh, of the uh, replacement so they don't need to uh, um, bear any risk to you know to damage the sensitive uh, components so with this two case study toyota and the g healthcare so let me deep dive into uh, the mixed reality a little bit uh, next slide please Okay, so I'm sure uh, many of you heard of VRAR, right? But me, MR is a uh, different. So VR is to you know to take the uh, user entirely out of the physical reality uh, to the enclosed digital reality, and AI is to present the digital information into the physical world and let the user to decide how they want to use those information. But mixed reality is different. So. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying uh, AR VR are not useful. Uh, they are all useful, and also they solve different type of uh, you know business problems. But however, we see, at Microsoft we see MI is a new type of computing. So, so that is we can teach the device, the platform, and also the software to sense and understand the physical world in real time. So, with the understanding of the environment, so the device can overlay the digital information onto the physical world. And most importantly, we are able to pin the right information to the right place at the right time. So, and also with the hand checking, the eye checking, and also the voice command. So HoloLens actually allows user to interact with the digital information or the holograms in a very natural way. And so this is the magic of mixed reality. So you are able to be at the place of the real world where your actual work takes place, and that you are able to blend the physical uh, with the digital information and solve the real world problem. Next slide, please. And Horus actually is our first party device for mixed reality. So this is the most comfortable, most immersive, and also most intuitive device you can find in the market. And uh, so since we launched HoloLens Generation 1 in 2015, so in the past seven years, we, we, we have built the largest ecosystem uh, for the first party and the third party uh, solution. And HoloLens 2 actually is runs on Windows uh, for HoloGram. So by introducing HoloLens 2 in your company, so you're actually not adding a new system. So it has the same process experience of the device management, the security management, as the other Windows device. And so um, you should have no issue to support enterprise level security through you know, HoloLens 2. Next slide. The advantage of the uh, HoloLens 2 in the design process is mostly yeah, in the validation phase when the designer uh, needs to, to know also, uh, whether his or her design you. is really uh, uh, so fit for industrialization. With, uh, and this uh, is Elba. hugely accelerated by 80%. On the manufacturing see, side, you know, user, uh, you know, we use HoloLens 2 uh, to enable the, the, the workers to achieve uh, complex tasks or tasks that require an intense reading the of documentation, while finally they're hands-free and they can access complex areas, so they can handle so uh, heavy, uh, heavy parts while having the all the information object. they need right in it front of their eyes. To improve the quality and also efficiency. Next slide. The advantage of the uh, Holland too in the design process is mostly in Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah. The advent. Okay. Yeah. So because all the capability that HoloLens and the Mixer are able to provide to customers, so in the past few years, so I think by end of 2021, we have seen one third of the you know Fortune 500 company they start to you know deploy the Mixer and HoloLens. Next slide. And also we have seen the customer that use HoloLens on quite a few user scenarios. I'm not going to uh, you know, talk about that one by one. Um, uh, I believe uh, the Sphere team is going to you know, uh, walk through those user scenarios and give you a deep dive of the uh, scenario and also a live demo. But quickly, so we have seen the customer using HoloLens 
not only the first line workers, but also informational workers and also moving forward, we believe horror will also enable the everyday consumers. Okay? So without further ado, so let me hand over to Svijian to deep dive into the user scenario and also live demo. Thank you, Andy. Hello, everyone. My name is Anand Murai. I'm the mixed reality developer from Spearzum Pune. And I'm going to talk about uh, Microsoft first party product that is uh, Remote Assist and Guides. Using. So, Remote Assist is the dynamic 365 mixed reality application uh, that really empowers users to collaborate more efficiently by working better together with from various locations. So Remote Assist works on HoloLens, Android, and iOS devices specific to call out even, uh, though we mostly are talking about HoloLens and app capability today. So Remote Assist enables individuals to collaborate remotely. Consider it more that see what I see type capability, where the person can able to share the view of what they are looking at and experience via the desktop with teams to get that immediate help that they need where they are solving issues. Faster reducing cost, but really increasing efficiency with that heads up and hands free experience. Uh, so technicians or whomever you want to call them, individuals, they need to have that information right in front of them. Sometimes at the time of say an inspection or maintenance procedure, uh, but they can also benefit from being hands free or on a mobile device because uh, RA enables technicians to resolve these issues quickly. Not only do they have the expertise over the shoulder capability, but they also have remote access to documents and work order information, kind of in that real world environment. Also, sometimes one-on-one uh, -on -one call isn't really enough to address the issues. Sometimes you want others to maybe observe or just assist in gender while you're working. So. RA enables individuals to reduce those costs of these routine, routine inspections by combining video screenshots, holographic annotation. And you're able to also use this data capture through remote assist to streamline workflow and process to empower your employees. So uh, we're going to show you remote assist field service call with Ted having some difficulties to run the piece of equipment. Over to Ted. Hello, Ted. Hi, Nod. Just joining the call. I'll be joining the call oh. from my from directly from the Howlands now. Yeah. There you go. So currently we are seeing a test field of view. Hey there, hey Ted. How are you not? How are you? Doing well. What about you? What's going on? Good. Uh, Joaquin uh, left the lab. He was out today, and um, about an hour from now we need to start using the Sonatech thermal press, and I'm just not familiar with it. I tried calling Joaquin, but um, he's um, out on uh, and not available. <laughs> no so um, can you help me get this up and running? Sure, no problem. Uh, it's not in operation. Is that correct? Yeah, I can't see. I I, I tried to start it a couple times, and it's still saying uh, stop depressed. And I've tried this. No problem. All right. I'm going to share you a PDF file across to you. OK, so in case uh, we lost the connection, we will always have that uh, whenever you need to, to observe this machine. Does it have the uh, specs on it? Yes, you can, you can browse oh, those okay. specs. I believe this is uh, Sonatech S3. It is the Sonatech S3. Yeah, OK. Oh, OK, OK, I see. OK. So you can keep this PDF aside whenever we need it. And let's get back, uh, look at 
the machine. Basically. Okay. Get out of the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see that LCD blinking in red? Yeah. So that is actually a touch it's screen. Red. And so you can see there is a reset button there. Oh, I'm it's, it's to a touch screen? It. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And just press it. And. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I didn't boom. think about that. And I can see uh, the pressure is around 180, 181. That looks mm -hmm. good to me. And uh, let's give it a try. Uh, if you just uh, look at the base of the machine, there are two knobs. And um, adding the annotation. Okay, can you please yep. try to press those? Okay, no problem. So, okay, uh, let's uh, check out the uh, below the machine, there is and there is one air compressor. Yep. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'm going to mark out a switch. Yep. Okay. Which way is supposed uh, to be? Flip that. Flip that towards you. And again, flip flip it back. Okay. And uh, there is a. Okay. But there is a. Pressure gauge, you see it? Yeah, I see it there. Okay, this is the one I'm marking out. And mm -hmm. uh, we need to check uh, if the pressure is about 80 PSI. Yeah, looks about 80. Oh, uh, let's get back on the machine. Oh. So uh, if you see on the at right side of the machine, there are two knobs. One is a red top and one is black top. Yeah, that is the one. Can you please uh, flip that uh, red knob uh, 180 degree counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Oh, OK. Oh, you said that. Uh, that hit these okay. and Yeah, you got it. Just uh, you could try to press two those Perfect. Knobs. Cool. I like uh, up and running. Okay. Thank you. So that was an example of what we can do with hematosis. I'm not on the site. Ted happens to be there. I was able to guide him the proper step steps to get uh, that piece of equipment up and running. You see? Next, we're going to demonstrate the power of Dynamic 365 Guides, which again is an out-of-the-box application from Microsoft built to run on the HoloLens. There is a mobile version on the web. With Guides, you're allowed to step-by-step -step holographic instruction and hands-free while doing so. It's an easy-to-use out-of-the-box, even who don't have a technological background, but uh, Guides is very much like uh, PowerPoint. Authorizing, authorizing a guide is very similar to creating a PowerPoint. Using, you'll also be able to connect to your business data on the back back end. So, what does that look like? Uh, a conjunction with uh, guides and linking up with platform like Power BI for Microsoft. It leverages performance data in real time with dashboard. So, we're able to gain insights and also pull out things such as if uh, I'm a training, uh, let's say uh, it's myself and Bridges uh, going through a guide. It takes me 12 minutes and uh, it takes Bridges eight minutes. It's easy to identify uh, the steps that might uh, need supplement training on or my call out that uh, I'm not qualified for the specific role. Uh, likewise, we have lifted guides into our standard operation procedure from clients into guides. And uh, notice that all the training run into the same problem at the same point. Often then it's recognized that uh, it's not so much the training, it's the training material that might need some announcement or critiquing. So uh, over to Ted again. He's going to show you one quick uh, guide demo. 
So today we're learning the non-contact uh, phenometer. It's a device used, medical device used in the uh, optical space. And there are two options here. One is the operate mode. I'm gonna adjust my headset just one second. Or the author mode. Uh, in this case, we're gonna operate this device. And the first step is to connect the device to the physical device. So we have a, uh, a um, QR code uh, on the device, and we're going to map the two together. So we're going to scan our environment and place the QR code onto the device so that we can actually connect the training to the physical device. Um, the first step is to um, uh, explain what the device does. This is a Rikert non-contact tonometer. And I'm using my head, I'm using gaze control to go through each of the steps of the training. Uh, the first step, the second step of this is to explain what the tonometer does. It basically is used to detect glaucoma in a patient's eye. And there are two process, two paths we can follow. One, we can talk, we can learn about the device components. And another one, we can learn about the device operation. In this case, we're gonna learn about the device operation. And again, I'm using my head, my gaze control, uh, not my hands at all, because my hands will be used in the process. So the first step is to make sure that the device is on. Yep, we have it on. You can see it's pressurized. Uh, we need to adjust the ring so we can see that it's clarity. So it's very clear from within it. Um, the next step is to be, we're gonna have the patient put their finger on the um, puff of air that's gonna come out of the device. This shows me exactly where to put my, put my finger. The next step is to move the side of the instrument. Oh, sorry, I went, I went too fast. The next step is to actually push to press the air so that the patient feels the air before we actually put the patient up to the device. Now we put the patient up and this allows us to adjust the device to fit for the particular patient <clears throat> so we're using the chin rest to move it up and down and fit the patient to the device the next step is to use the uh, controller to move, to align the patient with the eye. And it's not exactly aligned. We're gonna move that down a little bit. So the puff of the air, air goes directly into the eye. Now we can further Adjust, just refine adjustment. So, so it's one, one quarter, quarter inch difference between the eye. And then we can blow the puff of air into the eye. So this is an example of using with a physical device. Uh, we can also use with holographic components. So if you don't have a physical device when you're um, doing the training, you can use holograms to do the training as well. Sometimes we work with devices that are very large or uh, complex and we usually use holograms to do the training and then actually use a physical when they have available. And that's Microsoft Guys. Back to you, Nan. Awesome. So that is just an example of guides. And uh, so folks, we talk about Microsoft first party products. 
But you know, you can also do custom software development on the HoloLens. We're going to show you a little video here. You see? Uh, I think we need the audio. I can't. Yeah. Do we not see the audio? Not hear the audio? Hmm. Yeah, we need uh, this audio for this video. Uh, just, uh, yeah. So, folks, we've talked about you know Microsoft's first-party <laughs> products, but um, you know you can also do custom software development on the Hololens. Um, we're going to show a little video here that was a simple proof of concept that we put together, mm -hmm. basically to allow um, somebody to work with a cobot. So that's this robot you're seeing here. And the goal here was to kind of show how um, a visualization could help make an engineering assessment. So there's this wing that basically uh, has some defects on it, and the cobot is going to go and grind down the wing to try to remove the defect. After it gets done doing a cycle of grinding, it's going to hold the wing up in front of a 3D scanner, which is then going to scan the wing, generate a 3D model, push it to the Azure cloud, and then that Azure cloud 3D model can be viewed on the HoloLens and assessed using a heat map, which makes the defects really obvious and easy to see um, in a way that might be a little bit more difficult if you were just looking at the actual wing itself. Using that information, an engineer can then make an assessment about whether or not more grinding needs to be done in order to continue to remove the defect or if it appears to be back into tolerance. This was um, particularly interesting uh, for this client to work out as a proof of concept because this cobot can basically run without somebody being physically present. And in this way, somebody who is off site could basically do assessments of how the work is going with the robot and make determinations about if the workflow should continue or stop without needing to be uh, physically present. So this grinding cycle is done. And so now this uh, sensor is taking a 3D scan of the wing. And then in a moment here, we'll actually see a visualization of a heat map showing uh, different heights and defects on the wing uh, inside the HoloLens. So the first example we're going to see here is actually seeing the um, holographic heat map overlaid on the physical model itself. And so you can see here she's wearing the HoloLens. Um, she is opening up just a couple of different menus here. And then in a moment, we'll get a view from inside the headset. And so here you can see a representation um, of the model. This is overlay from the scan. And green means inside tolerance and red means out of tolerance. And this is an example of somebody viewing similar scans remotely. and checking the updated scans as the grinding process uh, continued. They're also able to manipulate this model, um, change the size or you know, look at it in more detail and rotate it. And by using this heat map, you can see which is in and out of tolerance, you know, red showing things that are you know, defects that need to be taken care of and blue showing cavities that need to be filled. And basically this was just a you know, custom developed proof of concept to explore ways you can visualize engineering data in the HoloLens. Cool. So uh, next slide, please. Okay. So we worked with provider out of Canada who had come to us, a surgeon who had asked, uh, would it be possible to get the some visual field for a laparoscope stream? as opposed to using the tower that we have been using for years after had using that tower and looking up at that angle for years, he complained of chronical neck pain and uh, was asking if 
you could get a good enough feed into the hollands where you could put that screen in place more comfortable. We work with the medical device manufacturer who had the tower. They sit us the tower and uh, we're able to do that this uh, what that looks like. So this is the video about the lap store. Hi, I'm Dr. David Pearlstone. Today we're going to take a look at comparing a standard diagnostic laparoscopy using a standard laparoscopy tower versus doing it with the Microsoft HoloLens. So first we're going to go and take a look at a standard diagnostic laparoscopy using our simulation set here. You can see we have an excellent view of our rubber kidney inside the box here. Excellent depth of field, excellent visualization, and excellent resolution. Now let's take a look at how we can do this using the Microsoft HoloLens 2. You'll notice I now have this screen in front of me and I can bring it very close to where I want to be. And now I'll go ahead and grab my scope. You'll notice I get the same level of depth of field, the same clarity, the same lighting, the same resolution as I had previously. I can move this screen to any location. This is actually physically considerably more comfortable to be looking down at this angle, I have to say. Or even we can go to an angle that's probably comfortable for a lot of people, which is looking up. This is just one example of how SphereGen Technologies and DICOM Director are bringing the latest breakthroughs in surgical innovation to the operating room using the Microsoft HoloLens 2. So those are a few custom development uh, examples we have. If uh, anyone have any questions, uh, obviously they can add it into the chat. Over to you, Utkash. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anand. So what's next? Uh, next is your mixed reality journey. And uh, in, in this, your mixed reality journey, we can help you in a lot of ways. Uh, we can help you ideate uh, one of your processes that you currently have. We, we strongly suggest that you use uh, the your subject matter expert, your stakeholders in order to ideate the process. Uh, we do a lot of assistance in it. it we, we give you we do a lot of custom development in an application support uh, across um, uh, the HoloLens. So uh, and we also are a HoloLens reseller. So we can start your MR journey uh, as soon as you have the little idea in your mind. Uh, we are open for questions. We are uh, you could also contact me or Brijesh. Uh, and this is our closing today. Thank you everybody for your time today.